Hello, this is Rafael Luandi from the University of West Florida Civils Research Group, and today I'll be presenting our paper Towards UAV Base Post Disaster Damage Detection and Localization, Hurricane Sally Case Study. Working with me in this study is Mr. Clevenger and Dr. Seville from the University of West Florida and Dr. Mahiari from the Institute for Human and Machine Cognition. Start with an introduction and motivation for this study. Then I will go over the video and test data used for this research as well as the methodology and training procedures. After that, I will go over the vision-based geolocation framework followed by the results we obtained as well as our conclusions and future work. For the introduction and motivation, this study is mainly focused on the feasibility of detecting post-disaster damages through camera images obtained from an unmanned aerial vehicle. To be able to do so, aerial footage from the University of West Florida campus after being hit by the hurricane Sally last year is used in our study. The main goal was to automatically locate and identify all the roof damages caused by Sally on the university campus using a convolutional neural network. We will go into more details about this methodology later in the presentation. With that in mind, we aim to propose a framework towards UAV-based post-disaster damage detection and localization to aid the effort of damage recovery after hurricanes and or other types of disasters. Firstly, to obtain the videos and images in order to conduct this study, footage of the University of West Florida campus was recorded following the hurricane using an UAV with an attached camera. The videos were captured, captured at a 3840 by 2860 resolution with 24 frames per second. However, to be able to use this data for testing purposes, all frames are downsized to 1920 by 1080. In total, 24 total videos ranging from 15 seconds to 5 minutes were captured. From this collection, two videos with high damage instance were selected and used for testing. For the training data, we used the ISDBA dataset, which are hurricane damage images captured by overhead drones. This dataset comes with annotations for damage segmentation, damage bounding box, and house bounding box. However, we did not use any of these annotations. Instead, we re annotate damages ourselves. The method used for object detection was a convolutional neural network. Basically, this method is a standard neural network which has been adapted to process images through convolution. And what exactly is convolution? Convolution takes a section of an input image this section here for example, and multiplies that section by a convolutional filter or kernel, like this, which is just a small matrix of specific selected values designed to draw out certain object features. So basically, this multiplication produces a feature which is going to populate this feature map here. So it takes this small section here, multiplies by a kernel, and then just populates our feature map. This process of convolution is repeated many times for each image using different convolution fi filters to produce many feature maps. Here is an example of a pass through a convolutional neural network. The top is the output of our first convolution, which is many feature maps. After that, it is passed through layers designed to reduce the size of the input, to normalize the feature map so that the network can generalize and then to further strain the features. At the end, as we can observe here, we, end, we wind up with small feature maps, but with dense information about the objects. The specific model used was the TensorFlow implementation of FasterR CNN Inception ResNet V2 640 by 640 pixel images. This model can be pre-trained by the COCO 2017, which is quite normal for this type of methods because it improved the results for a detection model. So, how does faster RCNN compares to other types of object detection methods? Uh, as we can see over here, it has a slow processing speed, but it has good ac accuracy when compared to other detection methods. On to the next part. In our study, we also propose an auto-generated geolocalization pipeline for detected damages. There are two main parts of this pipeline. Location of the damages in images and location of the same damages in the actual environment. The main idea was to find the pixel location of the, detected, of the detected damage in the camera frame of reference first, then using the fine frame transformations, the location of the damage in the real world can be calculated. 
And although we developed the framework for geolocalization in this study, the main focus on was, was on damage detection performed in the results. Because of that, the proof of concept for geolocalization portion of the pipeline is left for future work in this research. For the results, in this study, we mainly focus on the detection accuracy aspect of the proposed pipeline. In UAV footage data, we identified two different videos, including footage of two different buildings on UWF campus, with high volumes of damaged instances, which were Argo Hall and Martin Hall. Both roofs have a similar type of damage. We performed our model prediction and saved the individual image frames for analysis. Two types of numerical results were recorded for the object detection method, which was the average detection rate and the precision and recall variation by frame. And we have also provided visual examples of detections. For our calculations, a true positive is defined as a bounding box prediction with intersection over union of 50% or greater. In the analysis, the true positive rate and false negative detection for model predictions on 94 sample video frames from two videos were recorded. These frames were sampled using evil and space time intervals. A prediction is deemed a true positive if the bounded area contains at least 50% of the ground truth area for that damage. If the bounded area covers less than 50% of the ground truth area, or there is no relevant damage at the bounded location, the prediction becomes a false positive. When a prediction is not made for relevant damage instance, this is a false negative. Over here in these two tables, we can see the results that every detection rate of the damages in the Argo Hall building and the Martin Hall building, and we can see it's pretty close to 50%, and that's throughout the entire area, the entire video. And then on the second table, as we can observe over here, we have an average detection rate of 85% for the Argo Hall and 88% of the Argo Hall, and that's just for a specific selected section. So, we can conclude that according to the results, the proposed CNN based detection algorithm successfully detects roof damages and identifies its location in camera frame. The reason of average detection rate is around 50% is the motion of the UAV and the gimbal. We attempt to look into each frame individually from the footage and realize if the UAV has a, a rapid motion, the results in a frame of the motion blur, which then leads to performance degradation of the damage detection algorithm. That's mostly why we can see that over here we have a 55% detection rate of a moving UAV for the Argo Hall, but when we just take a select section that doesn't have a lot of movement, our average detection rate spikes and goes almost to 85%, uh, almost 30% more. And here is basically just a precision recall graph of our model. Uh, this here is uh, the precision recall of Argo Hall and the precision recall of the Martin Hall. And what this basically is, is precision is, the cal is calculated as the number of true positives over the number of true positives and false positives, and it is the measure of how valid the predictions made by the model are, so the better the precision, the better the model are, and false positives reduce the precision of the model, and recall is calculated as the number of true positives over the number of true positives and false negatives. Now over here is the prediction examples of the CNN. As it can be observed in the pictures, there is a bounding box around each identified damage on the roof, as well as the position vector and percent of damage identified. So over here, for example, we have a bounding box showing that there are some damage on this roof, the position vector pointing out where the damage is located, and the probability of this being uh, actually a damage. So right here we have a 94% probability of being a damage when compared to this one which is 28% of light damage. So as a conclusion for this paper, we were able to observe that the CNN model managed to detect a significant portion of roof damage in both videos tested. However, for future work, more training data is required to create a truly successful model for detecting roof damage consistently. Also, more testing data is required to fully explore the capabilities of these models as our testing set contains no instances of median or heavy damage. And lastly, for future work with improvements, this system could potentially be used in future disaster events. And that is it from me for today. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate on contacting me or Dr. Seville. Thank you very much for your time.